Martin Adenar to occupy the podium for the open forum. If you have any question, please just stand and um, proceed to the microphones in front. Okay. <laughs> State your name and um, your affiliation, then your question. Ateneo students, University Tayo. <laughs> I'm sure you enjoyed my portion. <laughs> I would like to to congratulate the men and women behind the documentary. Silani Mon Wallaping, Asak Mon, who is himself an Atenean. Where are you? Where are you? High school. Then uh, Ateneo di Manila. I'm going to go to Xavier University. Again, the other. Ateneo di Cagayan. So, you know. You know how it is. They say that Kung Atenean ka, well, you might just make it to this post. You might become a secretary one day. <laughs> but all, you know, I'm, I'm really impressed by your theater. You know, I am a, an audiophile, and I was telling Father Taborana, Guapo kayo in yung speakers. Microphone, it's really world class. And I'm sure, I'm sure uh, the chief of staff of the vice president, Boyd D, would agree that uh, this is comparable to the Kennedy School at Harvard University. It's, it's real. I think it's a... As we say it in Cagayan de Oro, Chata Kaayo. <laughs> Do you have any questions? Um, yes, please. Um, I'm Marvelous Davy Camila, the Humanities and Letters Academics and Social Engagement Commissioner. Um, I, have just, I have just observed that there is no um, secretary for Department of Education. Um, I want um, what are or what is her plan about the K-12 or any program or what have she done for the first 50 days? Thank you. Uh, Secretary Priores was there earlier. <coughs> Maybe he didn't notice that, but... <laughs> but the K-12 program, I explained to Secretary Secretary Priones that there is so many... There's so much work to be done. Strengthening the infrastructure, the classrooms, even the even the, no, the curriculum is more so. Okay, next question. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, Real Benedict Ate News, official student publication of Ate News Uh I'm just wondering why uh, did you choose Davao to be the venue of the first reading of the first 50 days of the third day? Why Davao? My answer to that is, why not? You know, it's, it's as simple as this. Our beautiful island, the island of Mindanao, has been long, a little bit forgotten, and it's been really our complaint. No, no. We feel like we've been forsaken 
the longest time. And now that we have a president from Mindanao, from Davao, and then you have more than half of the cabinet from Mindanao, the Mindanao sa, kita sa una. It's about time that we we glorify uh, our island and 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 we start where uh, where where the president is from, which is uh, Davao. Okay, another question. Uh, Father Joel Moyna. Okay. Hello, Father Joel. Thank you very much for the presentation. It was very informative. I I just like to ask you um, about the cooperation between secretaries, um, whether there is teamwork that is developing among the secretaries. Um, when uh, Gina Lopez came here in the second part, one of the very encouraging things I witnessed was that Secretary Pinion, Secretary Bial, and Gina Lopez were working together to be able to address the, the problems relative to the environment. You cannot solve problems with the environment unless proving to people it has something to do with their health and with their food uh, uh, supply. So maybe would, would you have uh, more to say about this cooperation? Uh, I think it would be essential also in the fight against drugs to complement the fight against drugs with, uh, with uh, uh, measures for sustainable development, measures for uplifting the people themselves. Thank you. Thank you, Father. It's a, it's a great question. I will speak first from from our end at the Presidential Communications Office and a testament of our continuous cooperation with the other cabinet portfolios is the documentary right now that we just showed you and as, uh, as the communications a team in the cabinet uh, we are in a very unique position to attend all cluster cabinet meetings because all government policies will not be imbibed by the grassroots if it is not delivered also through communication. So. Kami uh, po, fathers, uh, PCO, uh, we have uh, made it a point that in all of the activities of our fellow uh, portfolios or cabinet secretaries, we are always there to support them. As a matter of fact, one of the executive orders that we recommended to the president is the national communications policy. The National Communications Policy is a policy that institutionalizes the, the flow of information from one cabinet department to the next until it goes round to the president and to the public. Because uh, nung mga nakaraang taon po ay medyo nababayaan ang communication ng ating gobyerno. No, marami po mga ahensya din sa ilalim po ng PCO whose job it is to communicate not only to the people but also to the different agencies of government. At ito po yung mga ahensya tulad ng Philippine Information Agency na medyo nawalan po ng uh, accounting influensya at um, uh, saisay no, sa ating gobyerno dahil nga hindi po ito naging prioridad ng mga nakalang administrasyon. So, there are certain policies 
institutions that Marcos built uh, that were built in, in a way that we can call it a master stroke, like the Philippine Information Agency during the time of Secretary Sandania. Uh, it was a very relevant agency here in the Philippines. So we know why we And 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 to connect that to the cooperation that we need really to communicate. I'll give you an ex example. I was in Sulu uh, two weekends ago to the president. At ang sinabi ko sa akin ng ng manager ng Sulu Raja ng Bayan, Mr. Secretary, this is the first time that we have uh, ever had a press secretary in Sulu. Ganun din po yung sinabi sa akin dun sa Bukid Non at sa Cagayan de Oro na hindi po dinadalaw ng press secretary yung Philippine News Agency or Philippine Information Agency or Channel 4 or Radyo ng Bayan na nasa ilalim po ng poder natin. At sabi ko po sa kanila, just like as the island of Mindanao has long been forsaken, now I know that pati po pala yung mga ahensya, mga regional offices, father, ay napabayaan po. So how can you communicate and how can you solve the problems of Maria if you don't go to Maria and uh, ask her the problem? So um, pagdating po naman sa loob ng cabinet, father, no? um, ito po ay ang, ang saksihan ko po ay lahat nag-uusap-usap kung paano makatulong yung isang isang uh, department doon po naman sa polisya ng ibang departamento. Okay, thank you, Secretary. Um, sir, si student muna kasi na para siya kanina ni Father. <laughs> Magandang umaga po si uh, Secretary Antonar. Um, this is, uh, my name is Ray Alonsagay, a fourth year mass communication student. No. Also, and also, um, a member of Ateneo C, official student population of Ateneo de Davao University. Um, considering that our country is on the ring of fire, which is affected by typhoons, earthquakes, and um, tsunamis, etc. Ano po yung plano uh, ng mga government agencies such as the Department of Science and Technology and NDR NDRRMC uh, in order for our country to become disaster prepared and also mas madali sila, mas madali tayo maka-adapt ng effects ng climate change in the years to come. Thank you. Magandang tanong yan. Masasagot ko po yan. I can only speak on behalf of the department na pinapatakbo po natin. Ay nagkaroon po tayo ng panukala at binasa po ito ng ating Pangulo nung nakaraang State of the Nation Address. At yung binasa po ng Pangulo ay yung ating isunuminting panukala na magtatagpo tayo ng isang broadcast hub. At the same time, this broadcast hub is an emergency broadcast protocol of the nation. At itatayo po ito sa lugar, itong broadcast hub, sa lugar na hindi po tinatamaan ng bagyo. Ang tawag po natin dito ay Mindanao Broadcast Hub which will be in Davao. So kahit po binabagyo yung mga kapatid natin doon sa Visayas at binabagyo po doon sa Maynila kahit binahapo sila, ay maaari po tayong mag-broadcast at maaari po tayong makipag-communicate sa ating mga kababayan sa pamagitan ng Mindanao Broadcast Hub which will become a state of the art media hub in Mindanao and for people like you, or taking up mass communication, you no longer have to go to Manila to become one of the creme de la creme newscasters. You can stay here in Manila. And to add to that, the broadcast hub here in Davao is going to have four studios. The one studio there is going to be the first Muslim television channel, the first Muslim channel in the country. At binanggit na yun po ng Pangulo natin na magkakaroon din po tayo ng isang national TV network na tatawagin po natin ay Lumad Television. 
para po sa napakarang lumat po sa sahagan. At nag-usap po kami ni Father Tabora, kanikangin na lang at binanggit po sa atin na meron pong isang Islamic Center dito po sa Davao, uh, Ateneo de Davao. At ang sabi ko po sa kanya, ay bakit pa ako lilingon doon sa Malayo, sa Universidad ng Pilipinas, sa Diliman, para kumuha po ng isang konsultasyon sa mga kaibigan nating Muslim doon, kung meron kung meron pa rin na, uh, kung meron pa lang Islamic Center dito sa Ateneo de Davao. Kaya dito na lang po tayo, kung buwan na natin. So, broadcast up, emergency broadcast protocol, kahit anong lindol pa ang, uh, ang datama sa atin, or bagyo, uh, you will be the last man standing broadcasting. How can we make the dream of our president possible? Kung bibigyan nyo lang po kami ng kapipirangkot na budget na 200 million. <laughs> Kaya sabi ko, pero ang sabi niya po sa akin, eh, ito po ang dapat niyong gawin, Mr. Andanar. Uh, ito, ito, ito. Ito yung mga dapat mong gawin. At ibibigay namin sa inyo yung 1.5 billion pesos na hinihingi mo. Ngayong taon na ito, huwag natin hintayin ang 2017 para masimula na. At para may hapul po natin kahit papano. Kung hindi man ang TV station, kundi kahit yung programming man lang na salam television na may hapol po natin bago po mag-ikalawang sona ang ating Pangulo sa Hulyo na susunod na taon. Thank you, sir. Sir, in blue. Magandang umaga po. Ako po si Dan Pantoha ng Peace Builders Community. Uh, peace Building Field Worker po ako dun sa mga yes, conflict areas. Uh, Natutuwa po ako nung nagkaroon ng uh, unilateral ceasefire declaration ang ating pangulo. Kaya lang, no, uh, sa ginagawa po ngayon sa GPH at NDF na usapan, iniisip na po ba ng administrasyon ngayon, lalo na komunikasyon kayo, yung uh, ceasefire mechanism sa ground, napakahalaga po nun. Kasi kahit anong declaration natin sa taas, kapag walang mekanismo sa baba, uh, parang well, siguro hindi din mangyayari. Pangalawa pong uh, akibat ng tanong kong yun ay uh, ano ang uh, role ng CSO, Civil Society Organizations, sa ceasefire, kung meron silang role, at ano ang emphasis, ano ang pananaw ng uh, Pangulo, ng administrasyon, tungkol sa IP dahil po sila talaga ang naapektuhan nitong uh, armed conflict na ito. Salamat po sa katanungan. Noong unang itineklara na ng ating Pangulo ang uh, unilateral ceasefire, at sa pagkakalap ko po sir, ay uh, nagkaroon agad ng panuntunan ang Armed Forces of the Philippines kung ano po yung mekanismo na gagamitin sa ceasefire, no? Hindi lang po sa Mindanao, pati po sa Visayas at sa Luzon kung meron pong mga ating mga kapatid na miyembro ng CPB and NDF. Pero unfortunately ay nabula po ito, nabulilyaso, kaya hindi po na, you know, minidraw po ito ng Presidente, no? Pero, you know, that's already water under the bridge, no? Ang maganda pong balita dito, sir, ay tuloy-tuloy po ang may ipag-usap ng ating pamalaan sa CBP, NBA, NDF. As a matter of fact, naglabas ng isang statement si Kajoma Season uh, two days ago at sinasabi niya na sinatutuwa dahil ang ating Pangulo ay tuloy-tuloy ang kanyang uh, pahikipag, ano, pahikipag-dialogo sa ating mga kapatid sa kaliwa. At patunay po dyan ang peace talks na mangyayari ngayong August 22 sa Oslo, Norway at papunta na po doon ang ating kalihim na si Bebot Bellio 
at si Secretary Jess Duresa ay uh, patungo na rin po doon sa susunod na, na araw. At pagdating po naman sa ikalawang tanong ninyo, uh, ito po ay may kinalaman sa civil society or the, the civic organizations na ang, ang gobyerno po natin ay bukas. Bukas po ang pintuan ng gobyerno natin sa mga civil society organizations, civic groups para tumulong sa napaka tagal ng problema ng ating bansa patungkol sa kapayapaan. Patunay po dyan yung social uh, social agenda po ng ating uh, Cabinet Secretary Junior Vasco na very inclusive at sinasama po lahat ng membro ng civil society. At pagdating po naman sa problema ng ating mga katutubo, ng uh, ating IPs, ay ganun din po. Ay, ang, ang Pangulo ay uh, bukas po ang pintuan ng ating Presidente at bukas ang pintuan ng ng uh, Office of the Cabinet Secretary uh, para tulungan ng ating mga katutubo sa kanilang mga problema dito po sa ating bansa. So, Sir, uh, kung meron po kayong mga uh, request, kailangan huwag po kayong magatubili. Napitan niyo po ako para kung ano man yung concerns niyo. Ilalapit ko po kay Secretary Judy Pasco. Sir, another question from a student. Good morning, Mr. Secretary. I'm Zaira P. L. Carte Paul, second year international study student major in Asian Pop. <laughs> sir. Um, my question po, sir, is that is the Philippines really capable of stabilizing or um, keeping the K-12 curriculum or are we not risking the generation for the curriculum experimentation? Well, Kasi po, sir, yeah. I came from a public school po, Davao City National High School. Unfortunately, um, sir, I visited the school after graduating from it and Unfortunately, sir, some of the juniors I have um, they frequently tell me that, Ate, yung sa mga mga, na may ibang times tayo niya, ang libro, dili mauo niya, na yung times po na, dili daw, dali lang makorek ang libro sa mga estudyante, sir. So, are we really capable of the K-12 curriculum and stand by it, stand firmly with it? Palagay ko naman, there's no turning back. We've crossed the Rubicon. <laughs> yung mga ganun statement. No, eh, kasi ganito yun. Eh, kung kung titignan nyo po yung mga yung mga lugar, mga bansang napanigid po sa Pilipinas no, na meron na silang K-12. Ito po yung mga bansang mas maunlad po sa atin. No? At alam ko, dalawang bansa na lang ata yung hindi K-12. No? O isang bansa na lang. Kasi tayo yung K-12 na. Um, kung titignan po natin at lalo na uh, we have to consider that our nation is a nation uh, that is very dependent on the revenues, the remittances of the OFWs. No? So we need to get our act together to be at par with the educational system of the other countries. No? Uh, ang masakla po kasi, eh, meron tayong walong milyong OFWs at padami ng padami po yung umi-exit ng bansa natin na darating din po yung panahon na makikita po ng ating mga counterparts sa ibang bansa na ang kanilang, ang kanilang uh, human capital ang, ang kanilang capital ay human capital din yung mga manggagawa ay meron silang K-12 so doon pa lamang po kung di po tayo mag-K-12 ay uh, alkansita no. so we have no choice but to get our act together. And that is why institutions like Ateneo de Dabao uh, and other private institutions are, are helping and should continue helping our public education system para sa ganon ay maging handa at maging kompleto na yung K-12 educational system natin. It's going to be a long process. There's going to be a lot of bumps on the road ahead, but we must and we have to do it for us to be competitive internationally. Thank you. Um, more last question again, Ney. Um, good morning, Secretary. Good morning. Um, my name is David Abelia, um, third year master. Oh, so what's your name? I wish, sir. <laughs> so, um, question though is, um, what was the process of like of the executive order regarding the FOI or freedom on 
of information, like how are you able to make it like um, to execute it, like um, execute it uh, as fast as can? Because mm -hmm. of course, as a mass communication student, it's very important yes. uh, regarding that um, that order of freedom of information because. Um, as being Mascom students, we are the watchdogs of society. We have uh, um, the job of informing the people. So, of course, I want to know how, like, what's the process regarding that um, executive order? Thank you. Well, um, it's a good question. Coincidentally, I was meeting with my staff yesterday. And we talked about um, the mass, uh, the freedom of information manual, because it says there in the executive order that every agency should be completing its own FOI manual. Now, when the president signed it, we already hit the ground running, and we took up, we took it upon ourselves because we were course uh, appointed by the ES to to implement this no we already assembled an ad hoc committee to build the template for the freedom of information manual no, so we worked with World Bank uh, World Bank they have experience already in in um, in constructing the manual of the freedom of information in the UK and in the, in, in the United States. No? So we, as much as possible, we, we will make sure that we follow the best practices in the world. learning curve. No? So the manual is finished already. Um, what we will do now is we have a meeting with the other agencies like the DICT, Bakit may DICT dito, but may Department of Information and Communication Technology. Because yung DICT po yung may hawak ng opengov, yung opendata.gov.ph. No? So that open data kasi, na ginawa ng nakarang administrasyon, we will evolve that into the FOI. So may meeting po kami next week, and then um, ang Office of the Solicitor General naman, at the DOJ, they are tasked to write down all the exceptions on the freedom of information. Ito po yung mga hindi natin pwedeng buksan na informasyon dahil uh, maaaring maapektuhan ang ating halimbawa na lamang ang seguridad ng uh, uh, the national security. So, the deadline for the SOLGEN and the Department of Justice is August 28, if I'm not mistaken. So, ibigay po nila sa amin yung exceptions. And then after that, uh, yung freedom of information will, will have its, should have its uh, implementing rules already by November. Sinusunod lang po natin yung kalendaryo. Thank you.